How did I become a cholo? New episode of vlogs. Hey, everyone's been asking me. You know, I do boxing podcasts. I talk about music, different current events. And a lot of people have been asking me about, they wanted to know about me. First of all, before I talk about how I became a cholo, you can get an in-depth review about me on my CD audio book about where I was born at, how I became who I am before the rap game. So that's my CD audio book. The link's gonna be in my bio. It's 100 bucks, 150 bucks, um, but it's my story. You get to know where I'm born at, what neighborhoods I grew up in, and how my life before rap music. And it's called Who Am I? But let's get into the subject, how I became a cholo, all right? First of all, I grew up in the La Puente area where uh, predominantly, you could compare it to a lot of cities in the whole LA County, heavily Hispanic, probably one of the top Hispanic cities out there. Um, so obviously by growing up in La Puente, uh, you adapt to the certain um, lifestyles that they live in, right? So. I had a lot of people that were cholos, had a lot of people that were taggers, had a lot of regular people, had a lot of different friends. And you know, that was step one of the thing. But what really made me that cholo, that what really got me, because you know, as I grew up, I wasn't about, as every kid, we weren't about fighting gangs and stuff like that, unless you literally, family member is one and you become a kid and they jump you in, your family puts you in or they're just, that much involved that you're in the hood like that but that wasn't my case you know what i'm saying so i'm i'm a guy who lived in the neighborhood and uh sip like that so i think when it really moved me was when i left the neighborhood i grew up in and went out my neighborhood so when i went to this new area in the inland empire um i was hit with a lot of different cultures first culture i didn't see very often in my life was um, a blacks, African-American. So when I seen them, I was like, damn, I only see you on TV as a sports player or, or actor, same with whites. I have never seen a lot of white kids and I just didn't talk to the white kids and I just didn't talk to the um, black kids, not because I was racist, I was just not used to them. Only ones I seen was Hispanics and Asians. So, Obviously, when I moved to the Inland Empire, I I ran with the Hispanics again, you know, because they were like something we relate. I come into school, first thing they do, they're coming up to me. Hey, what's up, dog? Oh, shit. New kid from L.A. Woo-woo, blah-blah-blah. You know, SGB or woo-woo. Girls, damn, who's that fine new guy? Woo-woo. So I'm already in that circle. Uh, what really happened is... Uh, from what I recall by me thinking back before I did this vlog, I think that really got me to that gangster gangster mentality was uh, there was a party crew, uh, a party a party going on. I used to hang out with taggers and different stuff and different sort of party crew members also too. And they had a party crew uh, and threw a party, right? And this party was going on and they made a little money and, and they had a party. The party ended with Cholos coming to the party and um, beating up the doorman, stealing his money, whatever, right? So me knowing the party member guys, because I didn't know those Cholos, right? I didn't know those, those guys. Later, we became ops, right? But whatever, let's get to the subject. Um, those party crew members, um, after the party was over, they all went to um, what I remember his name, Roland. Like, I don't want to say too much names, but hey, Roland, you see this? Hit me up. Let's go hang, hang out, have a drink. Long time. But Roland, Saul went to their house, and they had their house, and it was at nighttime. I was a young buck, too, so, you know, we're kicking it late night at their house. Uh, maybe not all the money was taken, so there's probably a little beef going on with the Cholos and the party crew guys, right? Party crew guys are minding their own business. They're trying to do a show, or not show, they're trying to do a, a, a little party, backyard party, and these guys are taking their money, right? So a car load rolls up. I'm not gonna say the neighborhood, and they'll know definitely who, who became their worst nightmare after. But uh, yeah, they rolled up, and uh, they jumped out the car, crowbars and 
bats and older guys. Like I'm looking at like these guys could have been in the 30, 40s. Maybe they weren't, but maybe they were. But just they were older than from how we looked and the party crew members. And they had some of their youngsters and some older. So they roll up Carlos deep. They're like, what's cracking? Woo -woo. I had a friend named Roland. So from what I recall remembering, I remember they looked at Roland and Roland was a tall dude, but boom, boom, socked him in the jaw, busted his mouth. When I seen that, as a friend, as a whatever, I might not be in the party crew, I might not be part of the other hood, but I took upon myself because I was their guest in their house and at their party, whether I was dressed more cholo and these are party crew members, whatever, I took it upon myself, which most people won't do, but I took it upon myself to like, hey, get into it with these guys, these cholos, right? So what all I remember is me running up on a cholo like, what's up, you know? Older than me, whatever. And honestly, hey, I'm gonna tell it like it is. That's one of the last memories I had about that night. Because that next thing you know, crowbar to the head, six guys, three guys, I don't know who, how many people were on me, but a couple fools were on me, trying to jump me like this guy ran up on us and they, this guy saw our, you know, they're saying this is their hood or whatever, but it don't matter, they, they socked up my guy. And I remember looking at everybody in the party crew with their heads down, girls with their heads down, I stood up and I fought for these guys and I eventually got jumped, right? So from what I recall, next thing you know, like they're taking off, I'm busted up, whatever, cut. I have even um, probably like little scars from there too, from that day. But um, next thing you know, like everyone's trip. I remember girls go, oh my gosh, are you right? Blah, blah, blah. I can remember girls' voices and, and all that stuff. and uh. That's one of the first times I really experienced a lot of blood loss, right? And I was laughing. I don't know, that's when the cycle became the cycle, right? Like, I remember a lot of blood was dripping and I was just looking at myself in the mirror, laughing, looking at myself laughing again, just laughing, which is kind of stupid, but I don't know. It gave me some kind of like, like meaning in life. So weird as you guys were kids, right? So, um, I mean, it might sound dumb to people who are growing up right now, but as a kid, this is what happens. So first thing I do, obviously, um, you know, my feet, up, my parents see, they're like, what, whoa, sh what are you doing, whoa, whoa. First thing I do, I go to the neighborhood where I grew up at. I rounded up the people right there. It's like, it's game time. Start hanging out back with the old hood, uniting, putting homies together, and uh, being part of the water roof that, uh, that I has been planted for the rest of my life in, right? My mission now could have been a little bit personal, like everyone had their own missions, whatever. But my thing was like, yo, all these guys who did this to me, they're going to get it. And they're going to get it. And I'm not going to say how you, they got it because we got, we got basically raided, locked up for this. I mean... A lot of people, you know, like got in trouble for this. It's it's so far in the 90s. It's, hey, everything is clear out there now. So it's good, right? But um, yeah, it was it was a revenge one, 101 on my part, on mine. Came back, new, they, everybody's seen the new, that, that one kid, now he's going hard. Walking up to school, bang, starting ruckus with this guy. Boom, starting ruckus with this guy. I'm not gonna say how many ruckus. Then even getting people in that town who are in that town to roll with me and take them to the neighborhood, if you know what I'm saying, and make them, you know, with it, right? So now we're, we're causing a, a desmadre. We're causing crazy hype, um, noise, news, TV news is on us. Um, like, it's going crazy. It's a lot of drama going on, right? Um, a lot of things are popping. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what, you know, really put me into that life. And now my friends, whoever this happened to, they all let it go. But my thing just became a bigger cycle to the point where, where I lived at my house, 
they got cars put on fire at my house. I have bullet holes at my door, shots. Um, I'll get to another subject uh, about my house getting shot up, shotguns in front of my house, shootouts going on at the pad as a kid. I mean, it was crazy. It went crazy. I'm still here, obviously. <laughs> but, um, yeah, a lot of stuff went on. And uh, that's what made me probably took me to that pinnacle of being that cholo. You feel me? Um, next, you know, going back to the neighborhoods, getting apartments in the neighborhood, um, kicking with homies in the apartments in the neighborhood to getting your own apartment in different areas and really taking that to the heart. I felt like I had a battle to do and I won my battles and luckily I did my thing and that's how I became that probably cholo that you guys know. A um, lot of people similar story, kicked it with the homies, start hanging with the homies all day, uh, in encountering their fellow with people, whatever beef they had, I had their back, whatever beefs I had, they had my back. Growing up with them, um, we staying solid, and that's it, man. Life of a Cholo became Mr. Capone. So, uh, yeah, that's just how I became. And, hey, God bless me with something new, rap music. Hey, and after that, same thing. I took it to the heart to be the best in it. Just like I was the best in the streets, what I feel, and everybody around me who grew up around me knew I was one of them fools that when the red light comes and I roll up on the side of you, you better run that red light. Because you know who's ducking in the car right looking at you. But hey, those are the days. i blessing to become a rapper. Now the new goal is to be that rapper who's rocking the shows. And that's what I'm doing today. And I'm already done with that, baby. Basically, we did so much that nobody could done. And uh, shoot. So hey, now I'm talking, doing vlogs, right? Telling you little stories about how I became a cholo. And once again, if you want to know more in depth, Go get my CD audio book. And I'm out of here. Hey, go share this. Hey, similar experience or not, what do you guys think? All right, much love, respect. I'm out. Oh.